All right, I'm going to show you how to take a boring calculator like this that you may have made in Excel probably plenty of times. That's boring. It's interactive, but it's not super exciting. It just changes numbers. I'm going to show you how to change this and actually turn it into something as a standalone page that is interactive that you can send to people that they will actually be able to see all the numbers, understand the data in a different way. And you can have this as a standalone page, embed it on your website, embed it into tools like Notion, whatever you want to do with this, but allow people to explore data in a much more user-friendly way and in a way that actually makes more sense intuitively. And you can build it all on an Excel document or a Google Sheet. So let me show you how this is going to work here. Okay, so I have these two documents here. We're gonna use this reference here on the left and our actual spreadsheet here on the right. So this is what we're gonna be working with. We're gonna be using Grid and we wanna upload this Excel document into Grid. And Grid allows you then to take, um, or to create a user interface on top of a Google Sheet or an Excel document. And so we'll just click New Document here in your account. And then the bottom right, we can click Add Spreadsheet. Now I have this on my desktop. And so I can go from Upload from my computer and select the spreadsheet and click the investment calc. However, what I've found is that it's a lot easier if you're in Excel to actually save your Excel document into OneDrive, or if you're working in Google Drive, both of those way, ways work really well because then you don't have to ever upload the document again. It's always going to auto upload. Um, and I found that super helpful. So if this is saved in OneDrive, your changes are automatically gonna be made into your grid document. So I'm gonna turn auto save on and upload this to OneDrive. So now what's going to happen is any change I make here will be updated in my grid document. So from here, I'm going to look into OneDrive into my documents folder and find investment calc. And it's gonna load here in just a second. Awesome, I'm gonna give this a really quick title. Calculator, cool. And um, I'm a little bit picky on fonts, so I normally go to Poppins. So I'm gonna change everything here to Poppins just because I like the way <laughs> it looks. Okay, um, so the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna format this in a way that uh, is a little bit more understandable as this investment calculator. So I'm gonna make this two columns. And the way that I do that is I hover over here on the right with this gray bar. You'll notice all around this box, uh, has gray bars, so I can make uh, a new bar above, one below, or to the right, um, so I can add a new section or a new column. So now I have two columns here. The first thing I wanna do is go ahead and add in uh, a way that somebody can input the starting amount of their investment. And so I can do this in two ways. I can click the plus button and scroll down and find uh, input field, or if you wanna be a pro user, you can type slash input and then click enter or press enter. The next thing I wanna do is find the target cell. So what's the actual cell that I wanna change on the sheet on this page? And so down here in grid at the bottom, it shows me uh, the Excel, kind of an Excel preview. Um, so what does my sheet actually look like? And so I can click right here on the cell, it brings it up. And so I can see 20,000 is automatically input in there. Then for the label, what I wanna do is the same thing. I wanna to go to cell B2. So I want to say starting amount. So I wanna to go to advanced. Down here, there's tons of different uh, uh, features that we can look at adding to this input field. But for now, I just wanna change the width from medium to full. I want it to take up the entire space of this column. Uh, then from the minimum, I don't want anyone to put in any negative amounts because that wouldn't make sense for this calculator. So I'm just gonna have zero as the minimum and I don't care what the maximum is. Okay, so we have this already. I'm gonna to click to the right of this, press enter, and do the same thing, one more input field. I want my target cell. Um, what I want here is the contribution that somebody's going to make monthly. So click on the cell, go to the label, enter that as well. I also can enter in a manual label if I want to, so I can say monthly uh, contribution. What's nice is if you do attach it to the label to a cell, if you ever change it in your spreadsheet, it will be updated on the grid document too. So same thing here. I want a minimum of zero because I don't want any negative numbers. And then I also want this to be full width. So these are the same size here. Okay, now let's add some sliders. I think this is the coolest thing about grid because uh, 
everyone's used to in an Excel document, you can click and type in the number that you have or type in text. But in Excel or Google Sheets, it's difficult to add in functionality that makes it feel like you can play around with the numbers a lot more easily. So we want to make a slider. We'll uh, press the slash and then start typing slider. And now we can add this in. We're going to do the same thing, add the target cell. So we're going to put in the investment length. We'll add the label here. Same thing. I want to make this uh, full width. And then what I want to do is make the minimum zero and then the maximum. Uh, since it's a slider, it's always going to have a maximum of some sort. Um, grid will do, they have an auto mode, which is on right now, which will uh, try to figure out um, kind of what is a good range. But just keep in mind that you want to keep your usability in mind with a slider. So if I make the maximum of this $10,000, for instance, or 10,000 years, I guess, in this instance, it's really difficult for your users to actually get something that makes sense to on this slider. So instead, I want to kind of narrow this down to maybe 30 years. And immediately I can see this is great, but it has a problem of we're getting decimals in our year. And this is where we can add a step. And the step says, what are the increments that the slider changes? And I just want it to change by one. And now it will always go to the nearest whole number here. Okay, let's add in one more slider. And this one, I want it to change the rate of return. So I'll click there, add the label. I'm going to make this full width again. And then the step, I also uh, want to change this. Um, it looks like the step is accurate, but something that's not happening is there's no decimal places. Uh, so maybe I want this to be, uh, maybe I want this to be uh, maybe 6.5 percent. I want to have uh, half a percent in there. So I can actually change the format of this number and add in one decimal place. And this is going to update on our sheet. Sometimes it takes uh, maybe a minute for that to happen. There we go. Uh, so that change automatically got uh, updated. And then the step, I want this to be uh, about 0.5 of a percent. That looks great. Okay. So now we want to go ahead and build the right side of this, um, which is both going to be a table and a chart. So we have all of our input set up. The next thing I want is a table. So I can do the same thing. I can uh, go through this plus button and find a table. Or I think it's really good just to begin training yourself to using some of these really quick commands. So I can click table. And then I want to find, I made a quick little table down here. So what's cool is that the formatting of uh, the color, for instance, on interest gained, on interest gained, it's green. And that's actually going to carry over into that table, uh, which is, I think, super nice. Um, so I can highlight, hey, here's how much interest you gained from this. Now, I just did something wrong because I only want to highlight the data. And then we're going to have the row headers in a separate section. That way it's going to make it bold. Now, one thing you also want to note, too, is you can see how the, the numbers are at the bottom of each of these cells. And it can be uh, maybe that's what you're looking for, or maybe you want it in the middle, or maybe you want it at the top. I prefer it to be uh, aligned to the top. And so in your sheet, you can come over here, go to the alignment and align it to the top. And that change should be updated here in just a second. You can add a title if you'd like to. Um, I don't think it's really necessary in this instance. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. Uh, then when I want to change, I want to turn off alternating color. I like the look of that a little bit better. So now let's add in a chart. So you can kind of pick up, we're just going to look here, type in the chart. I'm going to do, uh, I think a line chart here is going to be best. Now we're going to use an offset formula, which is a super powerful formula that you can use uh, in Excel. And this is how it works. It basically, instead of just taking a standard chart, uh, which I do have this chart here. And by the way, I will have a link in the description for you to look at this page and download this uh, Excel document if you want to play around with it um, yourself. But instead of just trying to paste in or select the range of an entire uh, table um, or entire range of cells, we want to dynamically change this along with the investment length. So for instance, we had the maximum of 30 years, but if somebody selects 13, I only want the chart to show 13 years. And so we can use offset to do this. So the way it works is we're going to type offset start and open bracket. 
Um, then I want to click my first cell. So I'm going to click this right here. Now offset works in two ways. It can either take a, a range of cells or just one cell and it can translate it. So uh, either vertically or horizontally. So up and down, left and right. So it takes that one block or one range and shifts it around. Or we can actually change the height and the width and let it grow or do both. It can actually change in size and change in the way that it moves. I don't need it to change the way that it moves up and down. So for height and width that it's going to change up and down, I'm going to put a zero. But then I want to change the height. How tall is this range going to be? Um, and so the height is actually going to be dependent on the length of time. So you can see down here, I have 30 years worth of an investment table. So I only want it to show 13 years or whatever the user inputs. So I'm going to have it use this cell as its height and as its width, I want it to be three cells wide. So one, two, three, and then close the parentheses. And so what's really cool about this is now we can move this slider and we can see how it actually shows us uh, the preview of different years as well. Okay. And our table here gets updated. Um, and you can take a look in this Excel document, uh, how this is all being calculated here as well. So it's taking all these inputs and live updating as we go. Now, something that can be really helpful here, just to add um, a little bit more graphic interest to your spreadsheet is to use custom color codes. And uh, so the way that you can do that is we will go to our color palette here. You can use some of the different palettes in here, and these might work really well for you. Um, or maybe you want something that uh, is a little bit more uh, on brand, um, or maybe you have specific brand colors that you're looking for. Um, I have ones that I got from a website I'll show you here in a second. So this is the format that you would add custom colors to. And um, I'm noticing, I think this would probably be better as an area chart. Okay, so the way that I get these colors is I like this website here. Um, I'll have this link in the description. Super easy um, just to come through here and either input one color and get uh, suggestions on colors that work well with it or to just rotate through a ton of different color palettes. Um, and you can see the quick formula here on how you would enter those color palettes. The way it works is uh, this color, so the first color you input is going to be for uh, the first entry. So I can see that this color is going to match with total contribution. This color in the middle is for total interest. And this color at the end is for the balance. Okay, so let's take a quick view um, of what we've done so far here. Uh, so our calculator now has the ability to change uh, its investment length. It changes the chart along with it. And the rate of return also uh, updates the calculator too. Now, one more feature that I want to add to this is the ability to actually show and hide this section. And this is really helpful when you have a longer document um, that's more interactive uh, and you don't want to show everything right up front and overwhelm people. So for instance, this calculator that I have, the investment calculator is actually built into another calculator. And so I don't want it shown right away. I want the option to be able to show and hide this. And so by default, it's going to be hidden. And if someone wants to open it, they can do that. And it's actually really easy to add some of this uh, interactivity to your calculator. So the first thing I want to do is uh, just for the design of it, I'm going to change the color of this entire section and change it to a light gray. Okay. Now I want to add a section up here really quickly because we're going to change the visibility of this entire gray box. So I don't want the button itself to hide along with it. So what we can do is uh, type slash and then button. And we'll click on that. Now we actually have to build a little bit of logic in our Excel document to be able to change the visibility um, with this button. We could also do this with um, another uh, type of, um, uh, what's the right word in here? Uh, we could do this with a checkbox. Uh, interaction element is what I'm looking for. We could do this with a checkbox if we wanted to, but I think a button looks a little bit better, uh, a little bit cleaner here. So we're going to stick with a button. What we need to do in our Excel document um, is actually build out just a quick little uh, thing that helps this button become interactive. And so the first thing I want to do is have it say show 
uh, investment calculator. Okay, so show investment. Uh, did I spell that wrong? Wow. Okay, and by default, I want this to be false. So the visibility is going to be false, meaning it's not going to be visible. Then beneath that, I actually want to build something really quickly that just says whatever is the opposite of the cell above. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just create a really simple if statement that says if this cell is false, then true, otherwise false. And so you can see here, if I change the true, the cell beneath it becomes false. If I change this to false, the cell beneath it becomes true. And you'll see why we need to do this in a second. And so one more thing that we need to do before we actually integrate this into a button is I want to change the button's label so that when it's when the section is hidden, I want to say show the investment calculator and when it's visible, I want to say hide. And so the way that we can do this is just a really easy if statement that says if this is false, then we want it to say show investment calculator and otherwise. So if it's true, I want to say hide the investment calculator. Okay. So do a quick test of that. Awesome. So I want to make sure that this syncs really quickly. We'll come back over here into grid and we want to change the target cell. So when this button is clicked, uh, what cell is it going to affect? And we want to affect C14. Okay. Then our label, we're going to do B14. So we can see show investment calculator and then the value. And so what this says is this is going to be the value written to the target cell when the element is activated. So we can see right now in its state, it's going to be false. But when somebody clicks the button, it's then going to become true. And the reason we had that cell beneath it that has that if statement is so that it can flip back and forth. We can keep pressing the button to toggle the states back and forth. Okay. So the value is going to be C15. Next, what we need to do is we're going to hover over this section uh, this uh, column options button and go to uh, edit section. In here, we want to change the visibility. We'll click the FX button so we can actually create a formula here. Um, so we can either create a formula or just attach it to a cell. And I want it to just pull in this cells, either true or fal false value. So now if I click view, show investment calculator makes it visible, then also changes this to hide investment calculator. So if I click the button again, it hides it. And we have a really nice toggle back and forth between the two of these. Okay. Then what we can do once you're finished with your grid document, you can either take this link, copy in its original state or with your current changes and share that with somebody, or you can share it with somebody in your team by simply typing in their username, group, or email, clicking invite. And it's really easy to come in here and be able to uh, make a comment. And so maybe I want to make a comment right up here um, that says, uh, can we add in mm, something? Who knows? <laughs> uh, and so you then can have a conversation with your team about this uh, here. You can either delete the comment or you can resolve and remove the conversation along with your team. So you don't have to have a long thread, email, text, uh, Slack, whatever about the document that you're working on. You can come in and make these changes as you would like to. So the link is in the description to be able to download this if you'd like to, um, and also a link to get signed up with grid when you are ready to get starting, started building your own grid document.